church to go to the courts and what and remove the immunity of the gentleman, but our humble uh, leader for the union, Pastor Clement, is right here. Since there is no need for this to happen, uh, for us to go, we need to put him in prayers. And indeed, after after some months, he fell sick and he was taken abroad, and he came back in COVID. And everyone is saying in the country, oh, the, the, the God of the Seventh-day Adventist churches was very powerful. That even the man that we feared in the nation has passed on. They did nothing to him. They just prayed and now this man has died. That was not our wish as a church that he died. Our wish was for him to, to be converted yeah, from the experience. But later, it happened that way. And today we have one of the former governor, a general also, that gave himself for Christ. And he is today with us in the church. That's the impact of the story of conversion. However, what I wanted to initially talk about is, I think, to do with numbers. Numbers could not be an issue to me, basically. But the challenge is in the church. And the people who are converting their backgrounds, do I know this is a Muslim? Because when I go for an, uh, an open air evangelism and make an altar call, I know there is a protesters there, I have a Muslim there, and all of them will come. But then when they come, what programs do we have for them? For instance, for a Muslim that got converted, he has come in the church. And in the church, we have no prayer of five times in a day. What will this Muslim keep doing here? He or she will be asking himself or herself, have I come to the right church? Hence, that will lead him to the next, to the, to the other door next time. So what happens is that the church does a lot in sometimes keeping these numbers we are breaking. This is one thing I, I am looking at and also even the relational issue. We in the church sometimes live about the new convert that comes. The new convert will have the best reception. Even some churches will organize food the ones that have not been cooking chicken, they will cook and make sure a potluck is done if the administrators are there. And the traditional way of standing behind the genuinely baptized will be done. The one even standing behind might not even know the name. And after that prayers, we find that these people are not cared for. Yet there were people who stood behind them. What were they doing? Do they know where they live? Do they know whether they have challenges in their home? What kind of thing? A pastor alone may not be able to do all that work. So this has to do more with emphasis within the church. We may be like the story of the lost son and the other one who was inside was also lost but nobody knew that. Anyway, that, was, that is my sermon for Wednesday. Uh, he was inside but lost and he was not converted. When the brother who got lost was converted and came to his senses and he came inside the church. He came inside the home and found the brother who has never gone out. He was not actually converted. He was still lost. And addressed him, you are son, instead of my brother, to his father. I think there is something that we need to 
let us not discuss much about the numbers. Before we discuss about the numbers, we must discuss about the numbers inside. Are they converted? Yesterday, the great scholar, Pastor Rubin, came here and preached for us two types of conversion. The gracious conversion of what I have done and I have realized that I have sinned and gave my life to Jesus. And there is a gradual conversion and which happens mostly to pastor's kids that comes growth in gradually and this may be the situation that we may found ourselves as church members also we may be seated here but i believe strongly that we are in that process of gradual conversion may god bless you I think we uh, could go on till midnight because I see uh, other people uh, raising their hand. I would like now to give the word to Dr. Felix. Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank all of us, all of you who participated in this uh, panel discussion. And if you allow me just uh, a bit uh, about like 15, 20 minutes more, I would like to uh, provide you with uh, some uh, information that I believe all of us would like to know about this conference. Something that was like behind the stage, some statistics about how many uh, people viewed, how many other things happened during the conference. So it will take not so much time. So I, I believe we, we can, yeah, you can sit. Thank you very much. Back on this road I've traveled, I see so many times He's carried me through. And if there's one thing that I've learned in this life, my Redeemer is faithful and true. My Redeemer is faithful and true. Okay, first of all, what I would like to say that when we started this conference, our purpose was just to embark on the topic of uh, conversion. And I believe that this conference reached its goal because uh, I hope that we now, after the end of this conference, we can understand this phenomenon a bit better than we did before. And I also, and all of us, uh, we would like this conference not to be only something like academic exercise, academic endeavor, but we would like it to be practical. And maybe some of the conclusions or some of the ideas of this conference or presentation that we heard, that can be implemented in the life of the church. And now I would like just to br very briefly uh, show you some statistics of this uh, conference. So uh, in this conference, we have uh, 425 people who registered. And we have 302 people who were actively using the, uh, the platform and were active in many, many uh, presentations. And actually, it's okay. We always have people who registered, but maybe they are not particip participate in the conference. So now, just some interesting information. The most active people, and this is according to the statistics that we get from the platform, uh, those people who participated in, in many uh, uh, activities, like they made posts, they commented, and uh, did everything else. These are Gideon Peterson, Janet Oyende, Samuel Lumwe, David Bonsu Saivusu, and Harsha Devidra. So uh, during the conference, uh, we have 1,501 profile views. So people viewed profile of, of each other. And uh, also uh, during the conference, we have 
1,169 uh, uh, message exchanges through chat and maybe through other uh, means that were provided by the conferences. And uh, the person whose profile was viewed most of the time was Dr. Leonard Brower. So his profile was viewed 41, 41 times. So other people who, who were also, uh, whose profile, profile were also viewed very often is Dr. Robert Osei-Bonsu, 29 times, and Dr. Oscar Osindo, 38 uh, times. So speakers whose profile was bookmarked most often, uh, these are Petras Bahadur, Oscar Osindo, and Sanu Bubakar. Um, the most rated speaker is Tony Ogouma. Tony Ogouma. So he had uh, five ratings. Actually, we encourage uh, all participants and attendees to rate the presentation, and he got maximum of uh, ratings. Now, some a little uh, information about general statistics. So we had uh, 32 sessions, and we had uh, five. 1,722 views, uh, but we have only uh, about 2,000 of unique views. So it means that the same person, maybe because of the internet interruption or whatever, uh, they can be uh, viewed the same many times. Average rating is 4.8 for the presentation, and we had uh, 893 replays. So it's also a good um, indicator that something was uh, very interesting, that people wanted to watch it again. And we have uh, 270 unique replays, so that uh, 270 uh, presentations or people reviewed uh, several times the, uh, the same uh, presentation. So and these are, for example, the most uh, viewed presentations. Uh, the, the most viewed was the keynote address of Petr Cinchala, and it had 398 total views and 104 unique views. After that, uh, we have a presentation by Dr. Zaitsev. Uh, it had uh, 339 uh, total views and 102 unique views. And keynote address of Dr. Oscar Osindo, and we have uh, 305 total views and 101 uh, unique views. Uh, so if you speak about the replays, so we can see that uh, um, presentation of Dr. Elijah Mahano got 87 total uh, replays. After that, the presentation of Dr. Davidson Rosiferioni, 80 replays. And uh, a presentation of Petr Cinchala, 78 replays, this in terms of total replays. When we speak about unique replays, again, uh, Dr. Elijah Mahano uh, is uh, leading, and Dr. Osei Bonsu, morning devotion made by him, and after that, Dr. Davidson Razef Veroni, 21 replays. So the presentation that generated most of question uh, the first place is discussion panel, conversion in the urban context, 11 questions. After that, keynote address of Petr Cinchala, and after that, discussion panel, conversion and dual allegiance, uh, six uh, questions. And chat messages, uh, maximum chat messages, uh, uh, got presentation by Dr. Yusri Gurgus, 29, and Dr. Oscar Osindo, also 29, and after that, uh, presentation by Pat Cinchala. Uh, total reaction, so all of us have opportunity to, to react, uh, like of hearts or whatever, 100% agree, and many others. So total reactions, uh, we have a discussion panel, conversion and dual allegiance, 117. After that, a morning devotion uh, done by Dr. Robert Osei Bonsu, 112. And after that presentation of Dr. David Sandra Zeforioni, uh, 92. Uh, and uh, unique reactions. Um, the keynote address prof, uh, by Prof. Samuel Ngeva, 23 uh, unique reactions. Uh, after that uh, presentation by Petr Cinchala, 22. 
And after that presentation by Dr. Davidson Razifirivoni, 17 uh, uh, unique reactions. And now many people asked the question, uh, uh, how can we access the presentations even after, after, the, um, after the end of our conference? And uh, I want to tell you that all the presentations are still available on the platform. So you can uh, access platform and uh, have access to them. Uh, but of course, after maybe one month or so, uh, this conference will be closed because we rent uh, this platform for a short period of time. And what we are, what we are going to do, we want to uh, upload all the presentations on our YouTube channel. And if you don't know how to find our YouTube channel, uh, the easiest way most probably would be to go to our website. And if you scroll down our website to, to the very bottom, uh, you will see the, the signs of social media. And one of the signs is the YouTube channel. So you can simply go to the YouTube channel. And after that, uh, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, you have an opportunity to do this so that you will not miss any, any new information that is posted there. And uh, there, uh, we will create a playlist. We will create a playlist, and uh, this playlist will be called Fifth uh, Theological Seminary uh, Conference. And uh, we will upload all the presentations to this playlist, and you uh, will have opportunity to to access them. Also, uh, we would like to, uh, to publish the best uh, presentations in the proceedings that we will follow up, uh, but of course it will take some time. And also I would like to introduce and announce uh, that, uh, we, uh, um, uh, that the proceedings of the previous conference on discipleship is ready and very soon we will be able to, to get it. So on the slide you can see already the cover of the, of the proceedings. So uh, now uh, this is just like a short information about our conference and what was going on during these uh, three or four days. And I really hope that all of us really enjoyed this time. And now I just want to use several more minutes just to say thank you to everyone who uh, participated in this conference. And first of all, I would like to uh, say big thanks to the devotional speakers. And these are Dr. Robert Osei-Bonsu, who presented two times on Wednesday and on Friday, and Dr. Elijah Mahano, who presented on Thursday. Also, I would like to thank uh, the keynote speakers, and we have Dr. Oscar Osindo, who presented on Wednesday, Dr. Petr Cinchala, who presented on Thursday, and Prof. Samuel Ngeva, who presented on Friday. And uh, also, I would like to ask uh, to, to thank all the presenters who uh, participated in this conference. And um, let me just uh, name everyone very shortly. Uh, Dr. Gabriel Masva, Dr. Eugene Zaitsev, Dr. Yusri Gurgius, Dr. Uh, James Mutua, uh, Dr. Uh, Diaz and Dr. Kumar, uh, Tony Ogo-Uma, uh, and myself as well, and presenters on Thursday, uh, Sorry if I maybe don't read uh, the name well. Dr. Aguim Sheo, uh, Dr. Razafirivoni, Dr. Hachalinga, Dr. Lumwe, uh, Dr. Poniatowska, uh, Dr. Santraj, uh, Dr. Odiambo, and uh, Dr. Poniatowski. And uh, presenters on Friday Dr. Juma, Dr. Peterson, Dr. Brauer, uh, Dr. Tsigao. Uh, Mrs. Brower and uh, Prof. Mary Getui. Thank you all of people who presented. Also, I would like to thanks uh, to express my thanks to not only my but all of us to people who participated in panel discussion. And it was also a very important event uh, during our conference. And uh, on Wednesday we have a discussion uh, where Drs. Osindo. Uh, Bahadur and Dr. Lumwe participated. On Thursday, uh, we have Dr. Bauer, Dr. Bubakar, and Dr. Brauer. 
And on Friday, we have Dr. Park, Dr. Krause, and myself. And um, yes, also I would like to express gratitude to the conference committee team who worked very hard to organize everything. And first of all, is uh, I want to thank Dr. Leonard Brower, who was the chair of the uh, conference committee and who was behind many of the organizational process of this conference. And also to Dr. David Odiambo and to Dr. Malak Tsigao. Uh, next, my thanks is to uh, the PR and marketing team who also helped us very much to make this event uh, publicized and to um, spread the message about this conference. And also uh, they help us to prepare some templates and other stuff for the conference. And this is Miss Paris Onyambu, Miss Esther Anyango, and Mrs. Janet Oyendo. Thank you, thank you very much. And my special thanks to the IT people who were working behind the stage. And these are Mrs. Brandon Yangueso, uh, Mrs. Janice uh, Mu Indi, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ovino, uh, Ms. Belmira Muhune, and also Mrs. Grace Ochola, uh, who is the administrative assistant of the theological seminary. So do you see before I didn't show any, any pictures uh, because I believe that most of the people who were presenters, you uh, had opportunity to see them uh, during the conference. But those people were always working behind the stage. So uh, nobody saw what they were doing. So I believe it is important just to show their faces. So they were working from the beginning till the very end of the day and just to, to provide good uh, internet and everything so that everything can can run smoothly, and I would like to thank them very, very much for this support. So thank you, uh, IT team. And uh, finally, I would like to thank to the administration of AA, Dr. Vincent Injetti, Dr. Riz Parovo, and Elder Mahasivon Kemoya for the support of this conference. And the final thanks, the most important, I believe, is thanks to 302 active participants of this conference. This conference was done for you. So we are very thankful to you that you were the part of this conference. You asked questions, you watched the videos. And uh, thank you, thank you very much for, for your support. So uh, now um, I would like to announce that this conference came to the end. And in two years, we are going to have another conference. So now, if you have an idea of what could be the topic of the next conference, please share it with us so that uh, we, can, we can organize a conference on some topic that is relevant for the church pastors so that it can be a good, um, a good achievement for the church in, in general. So thank you all of you. And now, um, I would like to invite uh, Prof. Jetty. May I ask you to come uh, here on the stage? Maybe you would like to say something uh, in the end, and also I would like to invite you to pray with us uh, when we rounding up this uh, conference. I want to take this time to express our appreciation on behalf of Adventist University of, of Africa to all the stakeholders who have participated. I think we heard the list of different people who contributed to the success of this program and want to sincerely express our appreciation. Uh, this is one of the unique features of Adventist University of Africa. Being a graduate university, or a university which offers exclusively graduate programs, we are surely into research and conference presentations and publications. That's what I discovered when I came here. Uh, the big difference between a university which has an undergraduate plus a graduate program versus a university which offers exclusively graduate programs operates in a different realm altogether. 
It's about research, it's about interaction, it's about paradigms, it's about new thought. And I believe this conference certainly generated a lot of interest. It has generated a lot of interest. Uh, the mission of the church and the theme of the conference is very much aligned. This is what Adventist as a church we exist for. And I want to uh, thank the leaders in the seminary uh, for picking up this topic. And I believe that uh, we will come back two years from now as a, as a seminary. And one of the speakers mentioned this is not just for academic purposes. This conference is not just for academic purposes. It is for the purpose of application. After all, as someone has said, all education is for application. We're not going to just receive knowledge and, uh, and uh, uh, enjoy the knowledge